we know that light is made of photons but it also um, behaves as a wave, an electromagnetic wave that, that is an electric and uh, magnetic field uh, which oscillate in space and time. And we also know um, that uh, the electromagnetic wave obeys Maxwell's equation and that um, they propagate at the speed of light which we know to see and which is approximately 300,000 km per second. So at that time scientists had other examples of waves like uh, waves uh, at the surface of the sea or acoustic waves etc. But they were also convinced that waves needed a medium to propagate. Um, so for waves at the surface of the sea, this medium is just the water. Um, in acoustic waves, the medium is the air. Uh, we know that if we are um, in the vacuum, for instance, at the surface of the moon, uh, we can try to make some sound. They are not going to propagate um, because there is no medium for the propagation of the sound. Um, so, in analogy with uh, these waves they were uh, aware of, um, they thought that electromagnetic wave or light needed also a medium to propagate. They called this medium the ether. But the potential existence of the ether raises questions uh, like what would happen if I move through the ether would um, speed of light change accordingly? We know that this is what happens in the case of sound. Imagine Alice and Bob are on a boat and the boat is moving at the velocity v. Um, uh, Alice and Bob are at a distance d. We consider three events. The first event is when Alice claps in her hand. Um, the second event is when Bob hear uh, the sound from uh, Alice clapping in her hand and simultaneously clap in his hand uh, as well. And the third event is when Alice hears Bob's clap. So let's choose t not equal zero and x not equal zero. The sound takes some time to travel to Bob and of course during this time Bob has moved forward because um, the boat is moving forward. So when Bob hears Alice, uh, he is at x1 equals d plus v, the, vo the velocity of the boat, times t1, uh, the time of the second event. But we can also write this distance as the product of the speed of sound times t1 and solving for t1 we get. Now for the third event we have t2 equals t1 plus the time it takes for the sound to go from Bob to Alice. But because Alice is going towards the origin of the sound, the distance traveled by the sound is uh, shorter and is equal to d uh, minus the distance traveled by Alice between the second and third event. If I want to get the time instead of the distance, I need to divide by the speed of sound. Solving for T2, we get... Because the boat is moving through the air, which is a medium in which the sound propagates, the speed of sound is not the same if uh, we send the wave toward the direction uh, of the motion of the boat or if we send the wave um, in the opposite direction uh, to the motion of the boat. So the speed of sound in the frame of the boat uh, depends on the velocity of the boat. So what happens in the case of light? Uh, we see that if we are uh, moving through the ether we expect to have a different speed of light in the same way that we had different speed of sound when we were moving through the air. So in order to prove or disprove the existence of the ether, people tried to measure different speed of light uh, for different direction of the propagation of light. So people uh, imagined experiments which were 
relatively similar to the one of uh, Alice and Bob in their boat. But instead of comparing the time it takes for the wave to go from Alice to Bob with the time it takes for the wave to go from Bob to Alice, they found it easier to uh, measure the time it takes for the wave to go from Alice to Bob and then come back to Alice and compare that uh, for two different orientations of Bob and Alice with respect to the motion of the boat. So what we are representing in this figure is when Bob and Alice are parallel to the uh, velocity vector of the boat. Uh, but let's see now what happens when Alice and Bob are uh, perpendicular uh, to this direction. So at the initial time Alice claps in her hands and Bob hears the sound at a later time t1. But at this time he has moved due to the velocity of the boat. So the sound needs to propagate from the initial position of Alice at T0 until the position of Bob at T1. So this distance uh, is just the speed of the sound times T1, the time of propagation, and we can also write it using the Pythagorean theorem as solving for T1 we get At T1, when Bob hears the uh, sound from Alice, he also simultaneously claps in his hand and later on Alice hears uh, Bob's sound at time T2. We see that the problem is symmetric and the sound will take as much time to go from Bob to Alice that it took to go from Alice to Bob. So T2 will just equal to 2 times T1. So this is not the same time we got when Alice and Bob were parallel to the motion of the boat. In this case what we got was... So let's uh, note these times t perpendicular and t parallel. Very often the velocity of the wave is much fa uh, larger than the velocity of displacement through the medium. So here's the velocity of the boat. So in this case we can often use Taylor expansions and simplify the expression for uh, t perpendicular and t parallel. And in particular what matters is the difference between the two. So I'll just give the result uh, in the case of small uh, displacement velocity with respect to the velocity of the wave. Um, using this Taylor expansion what we get is so you can uh, easily do a measurement with uh, sound to uh, measure this difference between the time of propagation perpendicular and parallel to the uh, velocity of uh, displacement through the medium. It is much harder to do it with light because of the very large speed of light. But Michelson and Morley managed to do it using a, a very innovative interferometer which